Okej. Mina damer och herrar, har alla hittat en någorlunda en plats att sitta på? Eh, god morgon allesammans. Hjärtligt välkomna hem till oss på Questback ska ni vara. Eh, riktigt, riktigt roligt att se att så många av er har valt att tillbringa er förmiddag hemma hos oss här idag. Eh, om du eller ditt bolag inte utvecklas, då är ni under avveckling. Ett ganska bullsy statement så här på en ganska mörk, grå tisdagsmorgon. Men det jag skulle vilja att ni reflekterar lite över, eller funderar över, det är den senaste gången när ni senast hade... Ett initiativ, drog igång ett projekt på ett bolag som hade en avsevärd förbättrade förutsättningarna för det bolag som ni representerade. Tänk tillbaka till det initiativet där ni var en stor bidragande faktor till de här förbättringarna som ni iscensatte. Och när ni funderar på det här projektet, det här initiativet som ni var delaktiga och ansvariga för, vill jag att ni funderar en stund kring hur det fick er att känna er. Förhoppningsvis var det en känsla av glädje, positivitet och kanske stolthet också. Och den här känslan vill man ju ha så ofta som man kan. Och bidra med de här förbättringarna så ofta som möjligt. Och för er som inte har haft den känslan på ett tag. Då är jag jätteglad att ni har valt att komma hit idag. För vår förhoppning det är när ni går hemifrån er förmiddag här. Att ni tar med en eller två idéer. Att ni har fått in en eller två konkret exempel. På idéer eller förslag på hur ni kan hjälpa er själva, ert team eller en organisation med den här typen av förbättringar. Och just kontinuerlig utveckling, det är någonting som vi på Questback verkligen, verkligen brinner för. Och varför vi är så inspirerade av just kontinuerlig utveckling, feedback, det är för att vi har sett effekten av det på nära håll i de kunder och de projekt som vi har fått äran att jobba tillsammans med. Vi har sett hur man jobbar smartare, snabbare och blir mer effektiv än någonsin genom att hitta den perfekta mixen mellan teknik och metodik. Och det gäller att hänga med, för det går fort där ute. Den formel som vi utgår från och som vi använder oss av, den ser ut så här. E x uppe till 2 gånger CX är lika med x3. Och det står för Employee Experience times Customer Experience equals Experience Management Supercharged. Och varför vi har just en uppe till 2 vad det gäller för just medarbetarupplevelsen. Det är för att vi är, tror att det är där allting börjar. Men att det är en mix av att man arbetar med just medarbetarupplevelse, medarbetarengagemang och gör det samma med kunden. Och har man koll på de här två byggklossarna, ja, men då har man en väldigt, väldigt bra väg, en bra riktlinje framåt. Oxford University gjorde nämligen en studie så sent på som 2019 där man slog fast att bolag som arbetar med den här typen av förbättringsåtgärder och den här typen av kontinuerlig förbättring har en avsevärd betydelse och impact på det bolag som man jobbar på. I deras studie som gjordes 2019 så såg man att de bolag som drev den här typen av initiativ var betydligt mer lönsamma. Hade hela 12 procent ökad produktivitet och växte över fyra gånger snabbare än sina konkurrenter. Och sen var det en mängd andra fördelar som minskar personalomsättning och så vidare och så vidare. Och den här typen av effekt 
som vi ser. Och det är därför alla vi som jobbar på Questback är så passionerade kring just hur vi hjälper våra kunder att nå den här resultaten. Och se fram emot att hjälpa er att få den här typen av effekt på de bolag som ni representerar. Och vad har vi för take då, vi på Questback? Jo, vi vill vara HRs högra hand. Och ibland är vi tvungna att även vara den vänstra. Och vägleda er, HR-avdelningarna, att på riktigt utgöra den skillnad. Vi vill vara hjärtat, eller kittet, mellan just att använda the state of the art på tekniken. Och det har hänt så mycket de senaste åren bara. Där Questback verkligen har gått i bräschen för den här typen av utveckling. Men det handlar inte om den världens bästa teknik endast, utan det handlar också om metodiken. Och här såklart har vi hjälp av två miljarder surveys som vi har gjort genom åren. Men också sättet som vi arbetar med partners, med våra kunder för att se vilken typ av fråga, vilken typ av uppföljning är absolut bäst för den här typen av utmaning, situation eller det vi vill förändra. Och det här är någonting som vi verkligen drivs av. Sättet som vi gör detta då. Ja, hur, hur, hur gör vi? Vilka metoder finns? Jo, egentligen är det världens enklaste. Vi hjälper er och våra kunder att, att lyssna in, att tappa in till ert bolags absolut viktigaste resurs. Och det är ju såklart medarbetarna. Det här örat ska symbolisera att vi hjälper er att skapa den här lyssnandet, att möjliggöra det här. Vad tycker mina medarbetare? Vad tycker mitt team? Vad är det som är bra och vad är det så dåligt? Hur kan vi förändra status quo? Men det handlar inte bara om att lyssna, utan det som vi är passionerade för det är att vi skapar den här dialogen. Vi pratar om ett kontinuerligt lyssnande, ett kontinuerligt dialog. För att på riktigt skapa det här flödet. Och det handlar inte bara om att göra en gång, utan det handlar om att göra det över tid, hela tiden. Det är så man uppnår absolut bästa resultat. När jag lämnar över till morgonens verkliga talare så för oss handlar det om upplevelsen. Där den inre cirkeln ska symbolisera medarbetarresan. Där vår teknik, vår lösning, våra metoder stödjer från själva rekryteringsfasen i hela medarbetarresan fram till en kollega slutar. Och vi har precis liknande lösningar för kundresan. Och det är det här jag menar om. Vi behöver få ihop medarbetare med kundresan och då har vi en väldigt bra riktning. Jag har den stora äran att för önska min kollega Luke är hit idag som kommer prata om egentligen två delar, två lösningar som vi har specifikt kring just hur man stödjer den här medarbetarresan. Och det är vår Leadership 360-lösning och vårt sätt att mäta pulser med det. Men jag nämnde ju också att det spelar ingen roll hur mycket data vi har, hur mycket information vi har. Allt handlar ju sedan om hur vi kommunicerar detta som får en direkt skillnad på hur det här uppfattas, vilken effekt det får. Och jag är super lite nervös men exalterad av att hälsa Peter från vår fantastiska partner Snacka Snyggt. Följ inte dem på Instagram, gör det. Ni får ett fantastiskt bra information, konkreta tips kring just huvudet och kommunikation som är jätteinspirerande och intressant. Så vi får ihop en härlig mix idag, hoppas jag, kring tekniken och metodiken. Så so with that, uh, I would like to welcome my dear friend and colleague Luke Tolbert on stage. He's English, hence, hence I turned to English, <laughs> naturally. So give him a round, a big Swedish applause, and welcome to Stockholm. <laughs> welcome, Luke. Thank you. So I'm really sorry, but I'm going to speak in English the whole time. And I don't speak much Swedish. I heard one phrase, status quo. Uh. I really like the fact that you're referencing the UK's best music. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I don't really speak any Swedish, so we're going to do this in, uh, in, in uh, English, but you've already seen quite a lot of the words that I'm going to use in your presentation, all about experience management, etc. Uh, but before I show you our technology, I just wanted to talk a little bit about 
uh, about Questback and what's uh, what's driving our product roadmap and why we're building the tools that we're building. And a question we ask ourselves a lot in product management. So I should probably say that first. I'm uh, a VP of product and product marketing at Questback. Um, and so I've been working with our technology for the last six years to try to help our customers to get ahead. And one of the questions we ask ourselves all the time is what kind of business are we in? And that's an interesting question because it drives you to what is the success? How do you measure the success of what you're trying to do? So are we in the business of giving you technology? Should we measure success by how much technology we give you? You know, are we in the business of making money? And do we measure success by how much of that we have? And obviously the answer to both those things is yes. Um, but also I believe we're in the business of uh, helping you to deliver extraordinary experiences. Now that sounds very marketing-y and like very high level. So I'll dive a little bit deeper. What do we mean by extraordinary experiences? And a lot of you will have heard of the experience economy. So show of hands, who's heard of the experience economy? Fantastic, okay, about 20, 30% of the room. Um, extraordinary experiences are the things that define us as human beings, right? They're the things that drive us. They're the things that we go out looking for. They're the things that we tell our friends about and our colleagues about when we get into the office in the morning. Um, they're all of the things on here, right? Getting to the peak of a mountain, having a baby, skydiving. We're not gonna help you do any of this anytime soon um, yet, uh, but, they're also the smaller things. They're the things that make you keep going back to that same place for your cup of coffee. Yeah, it's the thing that made me when I got up at, uh, uh, this morning, I went to Joe and the Juice opposite to go and get my latte and it was closed at half past seven, right? So next time I'm here, am I gonna go to Joe and the Juice at half past seven in the morning? Even if they're open, I'll probably go somewhere else first, right? So they're the little things that make you always go back to the same airline. These little bits of great experience that we have are why we are loyal to different businesses, but they're also why our employees come to work every day. They come to work for great experiences. Yeah, of course you pay them. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice to have a little bit of emotional blackmail there, but, uh, but also they go there because they have a great experience. They have friends at work and, and they enjoy being there. It's why we use the same app every day, right? Why do you have three or four apps and you go into them every single day, all the time? because you have a great experience, you enjoy doing it. It's why you have a favorite streaming service, right? We all have one, it's probably Netflix, but it could be Amazon Prime, who knows? It might be the iPlayer on BBC, and it's probably not the Apple one. <laughs> <laughs> so extraordinary experiences don't just have to be, you know, going up to the summit of Mount Everest, which I know we'd all love to do broadly. It can be how you get your taxi, as simple as that or as simple as your first day at work. How many of us have really sat down and thought about what the experience is like for somebody who's never worked in a company before and they're doing their first day at work, right? What's it like for them? How intimidating is it for them? How welcoming was everybody? Did they have everything ready for them? And so what we do quite a lot is we look at these experience journeys and we try to look at all of the different steps and how we can try to improve that. Now, if you look at what Uber have done, this is th there's this phrase now, you know, looking for an Uber moment, right? Has finance seen its Uber moment? Has shopping in a shop seen its Uber moment? And I mean the good Uber moment, not the bad one that we've all heard about in the press. But what Uber did really, really well is they looked at that journey of something as simple as getting a taxi and they fixed, right? Who's got an Uber before? Okay. Good, everyone who's got a Lyft or a My Taxi, there are all sorts of different services. If you go to the Middle East and Africa, it's Kareem. Basically, they revolutionized an industry overnight by taking something that we all knew that nobody thought was broken and completely fixing it. And now they're a billion dollar industry, right? So these checking the experience and making it extraordinary for users is really, really important. And that also applies to our employee journey, you know? So we all have this employee journey. We all are used to it. You're used to looking for a job, starting work, going through the interview process, getting the offer and the negotiation, going, getting your contract and starting work. But how many times have we really taken a step back and looked at all the bits where that experience falls down? And why is that important? Because actually getting a job is just as competitive as getting a taxi. They could go somewhere else. They could, when they drop out, tell everyone about it. 
about how terrible it was. They could go on Glassdoor and say the interview process was terrible. You know, no one met me at the foyer. You know, the interview was, wasn't what I expected. I never heard back from them. How many people have been to a job interview and not heard back for a really long time? That's most of us, right? And that these are very simple things to fix. So looking at these experiences and trying to make them extraordinary is the business that we are in. And it's actually a grassroots thing. You can't change these experiences without empowering everybody in your organization to identify and close those experience gaps. You can't just look at this from the boardroom and say, OK, well, this is the experience. Let's change this. Of course you can if you're going to like radically change what you do or massively innovate. But generally, the day to day, you need to empower people in your organization to be able to find out where the experience is dropping down. And so this is something that we've been focusing on now for two or three years. How are we going to empower everybody in an organization to use experience data? And the first problem we came up against, which I'll show you how we kind of tried to solve it, is the democratization problem. And yeah, I could have called this the Pac-Man problem, I realize. But um, <laughs> basically, most people have no idea what to do. Right? If you went to somebody and said, I want you to fix the experience of your new recruits, they probably wouldn't know how to fix that experience. They haven't been a new recruit for 15 years. They've never been through that exact process in your organization because you changed it. So they think it's better. Um, but the other thing is, even if you wanted to say, well, why don't you get some data? Why don't you find out? Why don't you ask people going through this process? They have no idea how. And the reason is because you've got three types of users in your organization. You've got experts. These are your analysts, your scientists, the people who've done organizational psychology, the people who understand methodology. You've got your DIY users. These are the ones who've downloaded um, SurveyMonkey or they might use Essentials from Questback or whatever tool they might use to actually send a survey out. And then you've got the majority of the company who never wake up in the morning thinking, I'm going to send a survey, right? I never wake up in the morning saying, so I'm going to send a survey to somebody and I work for a survey company. So that's crazy. Most people don't wake up thinking the answer to this problem is to ask people. They sit down and they look at the problem and they say, I'm going to do this. They're going to go with their gut or they're going to search online for some Harvard Business Review article or something like that. So our problem is to enable all these people to get experience data, to identify those experience gaps and then to try to close them. Our next problem is, oh my God, we're suddenly, asked, we're suddenly empowering everyone in the company to get more data, and we know we already have this problem, right? We've got so much data. We already had too much data, and now I gave a tool to everyone in the company so they could get more data, and now we have way too much data. I don't know what to do with it all. And this is a problem that's been growing. This is uh, Gartner data showing the amount of data we've been gathering since the 90s, and how many is available for analysis. And Unsurprisingly, this is probably the same in your companies, the amount that you use in your day to day hasn't changed, right? You're probably logging into the same kind of dashboards. You're probably getting the same kind of reports and all of the data that you've collected increasing exponentially now is dark data. It's unavailable to you. You can't really access it without sending a load of emails to people who hate you because you said, can you give me the data from the last 10 years, right? So how do we close this gap? How do we give people more experience data? And this is important for so many reasons. It's not just because we have all this data already, so why don't we use it? It's also important because if we keep asking people questions that they've already answered, they're eventually going to be really annoyed with us, right? If every single time people go through a process, you ask them the same question because you don't have access to the data, they are going to stop answering. And so your response rates will go down, the quality of responses will go down, and you'll think that everything's fine. So we need to solve that problem. And the way we need to solve that problem, and I'll show you some of the solutions that we're putting into place to fix that, is to actually connect all of this data. How can we get all of the experience data from our customers? How can we get all of the experience data from our colleagues? Um, how can we connect that with operational data? with this kind of transactional data in the company, like when did people join? How much did they get paid? When was their performance review and what was it? Uh, but also how much money are they spending with us? Are they a customer? Have they been a customer for 10 years? All these sorts of things. And also, not so much now, but it will start to happen more and more, telemetry data, right? Data from IoT, 
things like the sensors in my car that make my insurance cheaper, those sorts of things. And pulling all of that together so that a user here in the center can find out why something is happening and what to do about it. And what we're bringing to that problem is a whole ton of AI and machine learning. So we're using a lot of services from AWS and Azure and Google to connect all of this. Um, and the more data you have, the more metadata you need to describe that data. And so what we're starting to do is to build models where we can explore the data with machine learning and actually try to find patterns that can tell you what to do next. And I'll show you some of that in a moment. OK. Um, OK, we'll come back to that, actually. I'm going to do a demo now. <laughs> I don't need luck. <laughs> I do. This is a really cool pointer, by the way, a bit of distraction. This is called distraction, by the way. If anyone's learned anything about magic, you distract somebody. Um, there's a button here which I press, and I can actually do everything from this. I don't even know how this works. This is probably like magic to me. I can imagine how it works, but whatever. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to show you um, two things today. I'm going to show you our Leadership 360 tool. How are we going to democratize leadership assessments and leadership development so that everybody inside an organization can improve and find out how they can be a better leader. And then I'm going to show you QB. So how can we apply the same kind of thinking to everybody in an organization, give everybody an idea of, uh, of the satisfaction and the sentiment inside an office, get feedback from everybody every single week, and empower them all to make improvements to find out how they can get better. So first of all, this is our uh, Leadership 360 solution. So I'm going to sign in. This is where I'm going a bit off. I've never done this using a clicker before, so I might go to the laptop in a minute, which is my comfort zone. Um, OK, and when we launched this, we launched it in actually partnership with one of our um, customers in Germany. And they were looking for a way of completely revolutionizing the way they did leadership assessments. In the past, it was a big annual thing. So you do a, a there's a project kicks off every May. Hey, guys, it's time to do your leadership development survey. And they all sent out their leadership development survey and then they got their results and then they had to go through this whole process. And the problem was it missed a lot of leaders. So people weren't included because maybe they started after or before. Maybe some people were aspiring project managers. The other problem is it's linked to their organizational <coughs> hierarchy, which means if I have a team, I'm included. If I don't have a team or I'm a project manager or a product manager, I'm not included. Even though it's really important to me, I have a leadership role, right? So. They wanted to solve all these problems by giving their employees a tool to do that. Now, what you can see here is our um, leadership assessment tool. And in here, we made it very, very simple for every user in the company to just say, OK, whenever you want, click Start 360. And then it would give them a simple wizard that they go through, explains to them what the process is going to be. They can scroll through the questions and see what kind of questions are going to be asked. I've gone back to my comfort zone. Did anyone notice that? <laughs> <laughs> they can find their team. And you'll see here, it's a bit faint on the screen, so apologies, but all the different rater groups that they can select from. So we've made it flexible for them. They can choose the team that they have, or they can add other people. So for instance, I'm going to choose my manager. I'm going to put Nicola in there. There we go. But I'm actually, OK, traditionally, this would just be my manager in a 360. But I'm actually also going to choose Frank. He's the CEO. Get on with him pretty well. Could probably do with some feedback from him on things like vision and communication and all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to include him. Now I get to my team. So I'm going to add my team. I could also add someone else if there's anyone else I want to add there. So I'm going to add Morton. Who's in there? Ah, you're not in there. OK, or were you? Was that you? Uh, dot blext. Here we go. So the person's not there, so I'm going to add them at questback.com. There we go. So I'm going to add someone who doesn't exist. So that's a common problem that people have is trying to add someone to a process who's not in the system. Um, so I'm going to hit next. Now I get to my peers. And I can choose whoever I want. I can choose external people. I can add people from Gmail or my, com or the com my customers. What if I'm a professional services person and I'm in a project with a customer? Wouldn't it be cool to do a leadership assessment on me because I'm managing that project and to include every single stakeholder in that company so they can tell me 
if they understand the vision, if they think I'm running the project properly. I'm actually going to skip this step just because uh, of time. And we're going to go through, you can have up to nine of these. Some of our customers have nine rated groups. I don't personally, I can't put people into more than four groups in my head, so I don't know how nine works, um, but you can. And you could invite the entire company. Maybe if I'm the CEO, what if I invited everybody to assess my leadership skills? That would be quite cool. So now I click next, add a personal message. Uh, this is clearly a demo, so I'm going to put this as a demo. There we go. They might send me some genuine feedback. So that's sort of <laughs> <laughs> I hit confirm and send. It's going to send all of those questions to the team and start a new leadership assessment wave. And now I'm in complete control. So I've got my self-assessment. I've got two people invited as my manager, 16 people invited as my team, and I could have other rated groups under there as well. I can remind those people. I can extend the wave. I can do something super, super common, which is I can go in here and say, oh my God, how did I forget to invite Radu? That's crazy. Okay, I'll add Radu. Now Radu's invited to this. So I'm in complete control of this process. And throughout this entire process, I'm going to get feedback on what stage we're at. So when everyone's received, everyone's completed their survey, I'm going to get an email to say, hey, your results are ready. So immediately, I'm going to go into view results. This is, uh, I don't know if anyone's watched a program from the UK called Blue Peter. Anyone? No? It's a terrible reference for Sweden. Okay, I'll never use that one again. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they did a lot of demos, and they'd always have one they made earlier. They'll always say, oh, here's one I made earlier. And so here's one I made earlier. Uh, I'm going to show you the results. Uh, these are actually my genuine Leadership 360 results. So um, I ran this process back in August. Uh, I'm probably going to run it again now because I like to run it quite regularly. And that's been quite a while now. Um, so these are my real results. You'll see why I show my real results in demos because they're pretty good. Um, <laughs> if, if it was all development errors and blind spots, I probably wouldn't show so much of it. Um, but now I can go in here and I can say, OK, well, how can I improve? Let's have a quick look at the detailed view. Remember that the, the person who launched this in the company uh, got this result straight away, right? There was no waiting. There was no when's the reporting phase, all of that. They are empowered to go in here straight away and look at all of their results. I can see all of the different rated groups I had. I invited one person as manager, seven people as my team, and 10 people as my peers. I can see all of the different bits of feedback. The one that is probably, I guess, the lowest is support and development. So I can expand that one and have a look at the individual questions underneath support and development. I get little icons here that show me if things are strengths or blind spots or development areas straight away. And I can go in here and see, OK, well, here are the questions. The lowest one is probably I take the time to learn about people's career aspirations. So yeah, that is the lowest. I mean, I don't care if they have career aspirations. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh my God, this is being recorded. Um, <laughs> um, I can go in here and actually uh, hover over this and get some more results um, and see uh, how the distribution of that is. So it's interesting to me to know what I thought. I thought I was really good. At, no, my manager thinks I'm really good at this. I think I'm terrible at this, right? So I know that I'm not very good at this. This is why it didn't come out as a blind spot. Um, my manager thinks I'm amazing at finding out about people's career aspirations. So immediately, you can see the value of this. If I was just having my one-to-one -one or my performance review with my manager, my manager would be like, no, no, don't worry about it. You're amazing at that. I've seen you do it. My team think I suck, right? So that's the important one to me. It's finding that out. And how many of us rely on what our manager tells us in order to know how we're going to uh, behave? This also tells me the response distribution. Super important information. You know, it could be that there's only one person who thinks it's one, and that's really skewed the results. But no, actually, we've got quite the three people thought it was a two. One of them is me, obviously. Four people uh, thought it was a three. So that's actually quite a large number of people think this is pretty bad. So how can I make this better? Well, this is why when we bring all the data together and start making connections between it, we can start to recommend improvements. So when I click on action here, you'll see that we've got a recommended action here. So based on what people have done in the past and based on what we know and based on what our team of content specialists has decided, we have something you can do to try to improve this aspect of your leadership. And what I can do here is just go in and say, you know what? I'm going to add the whole product management team to this. And I'm also going to add Radu. 
There we go. So we're going to collaborate with those people. I could add a comment here. I could add an attachment. So this is the template I use when I'm talking about people's career aspirations or whatever. Um, and then I can save that and it's going to go straight to my action board where they will receive an email to say a new action has been created and we can start collaborating on that. So let's bring them into that collaboration process. OK. We also have, obviously, the bit that everybody loves about feedback is the open comments. So how many people go straight to the open comments when they see feedback? Go on, let's be honest. No one looks at the pie chart, do they? They all go to the open comments. That's the fun stuff, right? Um, so we have four open questions in this. We have a start, continue and stop, which is fairly straightforward. Yeah, what should you stop doing? What should you continue doing? And what should you start doing? And then we have a last one, which is kind of like a catch all, just overall general comments about this person. Um, <laughs> yeah, OK, there's some testing data in here, thank God. Um, so what should I stop doing? Let's see if there's anything actionable in here. I should stop using humor. Anyone agree? <laughs> no one said yes. So that's good. I'm happy. I'll take that one. Uh, here's a good one. There are times when Luke uses comedy to his disservice. So I've always just wondered whether I should be in product management or stand up comedy. I guess I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, but I can say, you know what? That's quite insightful. That's something for me to do on my own. I'm going to click and add that to my actions as well. I'm just going to keep this in the back of my mind. I'm going to save this and that's going to Oof, straight into my action board um, and I'll be able to go in here and action this with my team. There we go. Uh, there are times when Luke uses comedy to his disservice. I can now click on this. Uh, if I did decide to collaborate with anyone, maybe I could add Nicola, my manager, to this and we could discuss it. Uh, what's most likely to happen is I'll add it to my action board and then my one to one with her we will talk about it and then I'll just think about it next time I'm presenting or something like that. And then when I'm ready to complete this, I say, yeah, I've stopped using comedy. You can click on the star. Everyone involved in an action will receive this. You can click on the star and rate the impact of this action. So as we go through the feedback impact cycle, yeah, OK, we're taking action, but did it make any difference? Was there any point to do that action? And then we collect this data, and it's going to help us make better recommendations next time. You know what? If you have a low score here and you do this action, we expect a big impact, those sorts of things. A bit like the Amazon people who bought this also bought this. OK, so this is how we are trying to change how people develop their leaders in large organizations. Um, I have one story about how we've deployed this to a customer. It's unfortunately I can't name the customer. Um, it's a, a large German pharmaceutical company, and they initially started with deploying this to 500 people inside the organization. Within three months, that was like a pilot. Within three months, they deployed it to 2000 people. So this is 2000 people in their organization with access to these tools to be able to get feedback and use it. And now they are deploying it to 90,000 people. And I'll just show you before I move on to my last demo, I'll just show you a quick quote from them. This was an email their HR department got. Um, and I love this quote um, because for so many reasons. One, because uh, we were mostly deploying this in Europe. And this is from the person from Latin America and Canada. I don't know where the USA is in all of that, Latin America and Canada, just those two bits, not the bit in the middle. Um, but I love this quote for two reasons. The first is that this is exactly why we designed it. Remember, we wanted to democratize these tools. And if you're going to give the tools to everyone in a company, it has to be easy to use. It has to be has to have a, an element of virality to it so that when you give it to one person, it's easy to give to another person and deploy without training and stuff like that. So it is digital, flexible, et cetera. But the other reason I love this quote is because ever since I started at Questback and we started trying to improve experiences for people in HR and for people inside the organization, we've wanted to make HR the hero, right? Not the, the person you kick in the company. I want a pay rise or I've got a problem with my pay or I've got a problem with this or I need to go on holiday, those sorts of things. Not the kind of like the very transactional thing, but the people who are actually there to provide solutions to make things better because that's what HR are doing, right? And so I love this because this made HR the hero in this company. They went from running processes to delivering tools to people so they could actually develop and become better. So I love that. Right. OK. And for my last trick. Um, so you saw there was a guide involved in this. It's what we call a guide. It's actually what we are starting to call experience apps. These things are like little apps 
that we can deploy to companies. And it's very, very flexible technology. So in the back end, we can apply any methodology, any visualization to these. And what we have done with QB is we've developed more. So we have an ideation one. So you can run an ideation process with your team. So, OK, you might have actions that were given to you by HR. HR said, if this is bad, do this. But wouldn't it be cool if we all know this is bad because that's what my team said? What if we entered a sort of design thinking inspired ideation flow with the team itself? You know, what can we do to make things better so people can suggest ideas, vote on the best ideas and implement them? Things like boosting team performance and again, improving leadership, all these sorts of things, making meetings better. But then we took it one further and said, what if actually on top of this, we're collecting feedback from everyone in the organization all the time? And so when we designed QB, we thought what would happen if every single Friday you received an email to say, how was your week, right? Because we all know engagement is this metric that doesn't change much, right? It's kind of persistent. There's a persistency to how you are at work about, you know, how much energy you put into something. I'm, I'm an engaged person or I'm not an engaged person. It's relatively difficult to move that needle. But actually how I feel at work, you know, what was my experience this week? is going to change massively based on the projects, based on the people I'm working with, the news, the weather, all these sorts of things. So are we tracking that? So here it is. This is a QB email. Um, this is, so we use this inside Questback. We've been using it now for a couple of years. Uh, we have about 400 customers using this. Um, and some of them are using it a lot. Some of them are trialing it. But what we do see is where people use it, the participation every single week is about 30 percent and over a period of about two months almost everybody does use it at least once so everybody wants to say something when they have a really bad experience or maybe even a great experience and there's a group of people there's a cohort in your company who just want to say something all the time and this gives those people a voice so i can say here hey my experience was fabulous this is uh, going to be genuine data in the system so I don't want to mess it up. OK. There we go, that's better. Right, so there we're embedding the feedback directly into the email as well. You noticed I actually did that first response from directly in the email. We don't want people to say, hey, click here to tell us how your week was. We want people to just in their email when they're walking home or whatever, just click my week was fabulous. And that's it. That's actually all we need. But if they do have a couple of extra minutes, we can take a bit more information. Why did you choose fabulous? Well, you know what? We made some good progress. My team is awesome and some personal reasons. Click continue. What could we have done to make things better? And two of the things we learned over the last three years of, have, of developing QB and looking at all the data and speaking to our customers is that if you give people a soapbox, some people just say lots of stuff. And so you need to give them some guidance. So we have some usage guidance here about what you can and can't say. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a five minute warning from the back there. So about what you can and can't say. And this was really, really important for some customers because people were just saying what they wanted, which is what you're going to get if you ask people for feedback. So we also put some controls in. Um, we work very closely with a partner in the UK, John Lewis. So I don't know if you know John Lewis, they're a big retailer, um, to implement some text analytics directly into this. So if anyone uses, they have a list of like 3000 swear words that aren't allowed. So if you use one of those swear words, it will block your comment. But also, um, uh, I would, I like Luke's presentation. <laughs> it's a bit self-serving, this one. And hit continue. And the system's going to say, wait, 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 wait. It looks like you're talking about somebody, right? So it's picked up straight away that I'm using someone's name or that I'm using a banned phrase or something like that. And I could still decide to push this through. I could still hit continue and this will go into a moderation. And then the moderators will see it and they can decide whether or not we're going to publish this one. What we don't want is people talking about salary and people talking about individuals badly, that sort of thing. This isn't a, a grievance network. Um, so I'll go back and I'll say, uh, love the new roadmap presentation. There we go. Continue straight through. And now if you've still got just a little bit of a minute, we're going to ask you one more question, which is about engagement. So I really put my heart into my job, strongly agree. And then I can go straight in to see the results. So the big difference here is we're asking everyone in the company about their feedback, 
And we're also asking everyone in the company to look at the results straight away and see what everyone else is saying. So this is our, um, our demo system. I can see here I've created the Sweden office. This isn't the real Sweden office, this is all demo data. Um, I can see the whole company, Google. If I click on this, then I'll see the vibe from week to week. And I can see here previous comments. I can see which things people are most happy and unhappy about. And I can click to add to actions if I want to. And I'll see all of this alongside all of my other results. So for instance, team performance, the same kind of stuff that we were looking at earlier, leadership, etc. I can go in here and say, okay, for that same group of people, what's the team performance like? And now because it's very flexible, I can create a group of people for a project. So I can go in there very quickly, create a group and see what their vibe is. You know, what, how are they feeling at work? Okay. I'm aware that the whole room is about to turn into a pumpkin. So I'm going to go back to my presentation quickly. There we go. Um, this is actually, uh, we're actually working on a go live today with this customer. Oops. Um, this is KWS in Germany. They're a large agrochemical company. Um, they're putting posters around the business uh, this week to uh, tell people that this is coming. They've actually been trialing this with a group of users for the last few months. So they've had like 50 people in there just giving feedback every week to see how this works. Um, and now they're going live with, I think it's four or 500 people inside the company eventually who'll be using this uh, just in the German part of the office. And so these posters are going up to say, look, we want to, you know, listen to the voice. We want you to be able to listen to the voice of the team. We want you to be able to identify areas of improvement. We're empowering you uh, to basically contribute to our success. So this is a, a genuine case of, of where this is being um, deployed right now. So as soon as I finish this, I'm going to go off and work on their go live. <laughs> right. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much.